When I first started making things about 13 years ago, I was wasting tons of time walking back and forth to my toolbox. I realized I needed a place where I could put the tools that I use every day, all the time, so I could stay at my workbench and keep working. And at the time, I worked for a big university out in California, and they got scientific equipment delivered in these huge custom-made wooden crates, and then they would throw the crates away. And I was a new woodworker on an English teacher's salary, so I would take the crates home with me. So this is just one side of a shipping crate, and all I did was paint it green, screw it to the wall, and cover it in tools. When I was designing my tool wall, I had two big ideas. First, I wanted to keep it limited to the stuff that I really used every day. Second, I knew that my tools couldn't lift up to get them off the tool wall. If your tools lift straight up, then you can't have anything above each group of tools because it would get in the way. So instead, your tools need to lift out. That allows you to pack the entire surface of the tool board with as much stuff as possible. I also wanted to be able to grab things one-handed. You know, sometimes you've got a part of a machine in your hand and you really need a screwdriver and you're not going to put that thing down. You need to be able to just grab it quickly and get to work. So those things, trying to lift tools out instead of up and having one-handed access to everything, that led to a lot of different solutions. Some of them are simple and some of them are complicated. My chisel holder is pretty simple and my screwdriver holder is kind of complicated. To make this chisel holder, I just drilled a bunch of holes in a piece of wood and then ran it through the table saw so I zipped off one side of the hole. You can see how all the holes are exposed and that allows me to lift chisels just a tiny bit up and then lift them off. I bet every woodworker has made one of these. They're very simple to make. Um, right now, I have my Narex chisels on here. I didn't love these when they first came out, but I find I use the small ones all the time for pairing and detail work. The length is really good for that. And they're well made out of a super hard steel, so I probably wasn't as nice about these as I could have been. I like them a lot more than I did. Um, originally, the chisels I had in here were much shorter, and they didn't hang down below the tool wall. This isn't super safe. If I were bending down and I stood up, I could catch myself on these blades. I need to move this whole thing up a few inches just for safety. Now, my screwdrivers were kind of a challenge because I wanted to store 10 of them in a small space, and I didn't like any of the solutions I saw on the internet. So I actually came up with this. It's just a single block of wood that I made on the table saw, and I cut saw kerfs partway through, and that allows all the big screwdrivers to just lift straight out. But then I also wanted to put my smaller ones in between the big ones to save space. And what I came up with was drilling an angled hole in between each of the big screwdrivers on this lower level. And so my small ones just lift out really easily and they're super easy to put back. This is one of those weird things where I really didn't know what I was doing. I had just gotten my table saw and when I wanted to drill these holes at whatever angle this is, I jigged up the drill press in some crazy way that I could do it much more easily now. But even though I was a beginner and I was really winging it, it came out perfect. Pretty much every time I use this, I think this is exactly what I would want. I couldn't dream up something better now. And uh, I guess beginner's luck is really a thing. A lot of makers I know own a million drill bits, but I don't. I do almost all of my work with spade, Forstner, and twist bits. And I find that gets pretty much everything done. So this tool holder right here is just a piece of wood with some holes drilled in it. And I have to lift the drill bits up a little bit to get them out, but I kept the holes pretty shallow, so I don't have to lift them up very far. And I've got some new ones that I bought recently that I don't have holes for yet, and I just jam them in between the other ones so I can keep going with the project. And then for the twist bits, I started out with Harbor Freight drill bits, which uh, suck, but they're cheap. I do find having a set in 64ths is really good. And the Harbor Freight bits did come in a pretty nice case with this nice index. And I thought I could just mount that directly to the wall to store my drill bits, especially after I upgraded to some nicer ones. Now, the little ones are easy to get out. You can just lift them, but the larger ones in back were more of a problem. One thing I noticed about this holder is it has a little tab that keeps it from leaning forward too far, and it had pivot points on either side. So I just screwed those into blocks of wood, and when I need to get a larger drill bit, the whole thing just slides forward like this, and I can pick up a larger bit. It's easy to put back, 
and then it tilts back a tiny bit so gravity keeps it in place. This system has worked out beautifully and all the bits I need are stored in a compact space. In between my drill bits and my screwdrivers, I keep my pliers. And this was a real challenge for me. Pliers, just by themselves, they're awkward. There's no obvious way to hang them. A lot of people put them flat against the wall like this, but then six or seven pliers is gonna take up a lot of space. I wanted them to turn sideways also so I could just grab them and get to them. What I finally came up with was this piece of metal here. This is a piece of old ruler that was bent and I was gonna throw it away anyhow. So I uh, hacked off a section of it and screwed it to some spacer blocks. And now all my pliers can just drop on there like that. It's a very convenient way to have them and grab them. I took off a few so you could see what's here, but usually I can fit eight or nine pairs of pliers here, including nippers and wire strippers, small pair of channel locks, it's really everything I would use day to day. Now, this is the one thing on the tool board where I couldn't get away from that lifting problem. So this is one of the few places where you see the space above it is left blank and not used for anything. I just couldn't find a way around lifting them up. But I also don't use pliers so much in my day to day work. So this solution has still worked out well. If you want your tools to be grab and go, nothing beats magnets, especially those little neodymium magnets that you can buy really cheaply. I have those all over this board and they're perfect. So here's a marking knife. These were really popularized by Paul Sellers and they're great, super inexpensive knife that's great for marking out joinery. And this screw right here looks like a brass screw, but it's just brass plated, it's steel. And so with the magnet I have there, I can just stick it on the board and grabbing it and putting it back couldn't be easier. I don't even have to get on the magnet exactly because it's so strong, it pulls the knife over. So I love that solution. I've also got this little board over here where I store tiny little rulers. And what I did is drill in from behind and install magnets in the middle of the block and then do some saw curves so that these rulers would slide in. So here's my little six inch machinist scale that I use all the time. And when I put it in that saw curve, it stays because there's a magnet. I have this nice brown and sharp ruler. This is a really fancy one and it's marked in tenths of an inch, which is weird, but occasionally useful. And then I have this ridiculous gizmo with a protractor and a drill gauge and whatever that I literally never use, but I built this with three slots and I need three things to put in it. So that goes there, even though I never use it. Another thing I use for magnets is my little Craig measuring and marking jig that I have here. Um, this jig is, I don't think it's widely appreciated, but it's super good because it lets you control this projection of the ruler out of the stock. And that's perfect, especially for setting tools in sharpening jigs, like especially my turning tools. I use this all the time for that. And um, this is a very inexpensive tool that works really well. And of course the rule is made from steel and I put one of those little neo magnets on a block of wood up here and it just sits right there like that, it's a piece of cake. So magnets get a lot of stuff done on this board. Anytime I'm in the shop, I'm gonna be using squares, not just for measuring and marking, but also for checking my equipment and making sure it's set up correctly. So the squares I use the most are combination squares. I like this little six inch one the best. Uh, it's my favorite because it's so light and easy to handle. Of course, six inches isn't gonna get you there for a lot of workshop tasks. So the 12 inch Sterrett square is really the gold standard for that. This one is actually made from parts. It's a Sterrett stock and a Miller's Falls rule, uh, probably made by Sterrett. It's so similar to the Sterrett ones I have and they fit together perfectly. So I made this one out of parts that I bought for a dollar here and there, but it works as well as any of the other squares I've got. I have a little tiny machinist square right here that I used to use for stuff and I never do anymore. I really should get rid of it. And when I'm laying out bigger things like bookshelves, I have this larger Stanley square that has a 14 inch rule. So it's better for any time I have to lay out something that's at longer distances. I do use wooden layout tools for my furniture making. They're so light and easy to handle and they're plenty accurate enough for woodwork. And then over here on the corner too, I also have a bunch of framing squares that are just hanging on the corner of my tool board. And uh, they're hanging over there on the corner because I literally never use them, or maybe I use them once a year. They were cheap and I bought them at flea markets for a dollar or two. I, I can't say you need them a lot if you're just doing furniture scale work.
When I got these two router planes, I really wasn't sure how to hang them up. It wasn't obvious. And what I finally came up with was just a little wooden hanger here with a loop of shoelace tied around it. And that loop of shoelace goes around the handle of the router plane. And as you can see, I can put it on and take it off with one hand and they're held in a really convenient position. Since I came up with this, I've seen a number of other ways of doing it, like with a pair of screws and they just sit on them like that. There are ways that are probably better, but honestly, this has worked really well and I don't see any reason to change it. It's super easy to grab them and lift them off the board. Um, now over here, I also have a little space where I had a couple of spoke shaves. I had a 151. That's my favorite because it's got the pair of adjusters. I really like that. I also used to keep a 51 here, which is the same thing except no adjusters. I honestly have no idea where that 51 is. I don't know if it survived the move. I also have the Stanley number 80 cabinet scraper, which is a super great tool. If you're having tear out, you're having problems with your planes, the cabinet scraper will probably take care of that. Um, the reality is I almost never use it. And I mostly hang on to it because I know it's a cheap and simple solution to a problem that a lot of people have and I should use it more, but I just don't need it. So I probably should take these tools off and replace them with something I use more often. The only part that we haven't talked about yet is right here, which is where I keep my hammers. I usually have a carpenter's hammer, a claw hammer on my workbench, but for a lot of things, a ball peen hammer is way better, especially driving a punch or tapping out a pin. This is really what I like for that work. This is an inexpensive Chinese one that came from the flea market, and I built this little wooden cradle for it so the head is just held right here. It also kind of naturally hinges. This is perfect because when I'm standing at the bench, I can just make a half turn back and this is right where my right hand goes. So even if I have a tool, like maybe I have a little punch like this in my left hand, I can reach over with my right hand and grab this hammer, swing in and make a little mark and then immediately put it back. I made this to be really quick and easy so I wouldn't have extra tools cluttering up my bench. And of course, right next to it, I have this little tack hammer. I use these all the time for tacks and small nails and stuff like that. This one's super nice. It's unmarked, but it works really well. And then uh, to hang it, I have this, this weird looking little chromed peg here. Uh, when I was first making this, my wife and I had one of those little hand mixers you have for the kitchen and it broke and we were gonna throw it away, but all the attachments were really nice chromed steel. And so uh, what I did is I cut the attachments off, like the whisk or the beater or whatever, and the little stem that actually goes into the mixer was left over. And these are beautiful because they're rounded and they're chromed and I just glued them into the board and they make a perfect place to hold things. I have several of them glued into this board and they've worked perfectly, just me <laughs> scavenging in the junk, uh, frankly. And then over here, this is the Nicholson Handy File. I don't know if they still make these. This is one of the older American ones. Uh, Nicholson files have kind of taken a dive in quality since they moved to Mexico, unfortunately. This is a great file because it's got a double cut coarse side, a single cut fine side, one edge with teeth and one safe edge. And of course it has the handle built in. That's why they call it the handy file. These are fantastic as just a, oh, I've got a little burr on this one piece of metal. Let me just have a file that can do kind of everything that I can just do a couple of quick strokes and then put it right back up on my board. If you find one of these in good condition used, snap it up. The handy file is a great invention and probably other companies make them too. The last thing we want to talk about right here is my little cup holders. I'm pretty sure I got the idea for these from watching uh, Matthias Wandel, but I don't remember. It was so long ago. These are just sections of PVC pipe that I cut on the table saw at 45 degrees, and then I epoxied them to this strip of pine and then screwed the whole thing to the tool board with two screws. And these just give me cups at a nice height where I can keep everything, pens, pencils, markers, chopsticks, popsicle sticks, coffee stirrers, uh, old toothbrushes for cleaning stuff, glue brushes. I keep all sorts of things in here. They're always packed because I always wanna put more stuff in. These work beautifully and they keep all these little things from rattling around my shop and they stay clean. And now I was gonna say organized, but not really organized, but close enough. These work beautifully and I would do these again in a heartbeat. Right behind these, I have this big uh, drafting square, this layout square. 
which you don't see in a lot of woodworking shops. These are great for laying out work on sheet goods. So if you're making cabinetry and stuff like that, these are actually wonderful for drawing full size right on your parts. I rarely work with plywood or do cabinetry anymore because I'm really not that good at it. So I don't use this square very often, but I'm still glad I've got it. It was another one of those yard sale finds. It was a couple bucks. I would buy one again if I saw it. It's funny, I've been making things long enough now that I'm actually nostalgic for the early days, the early times when I made stuff like this tool board. I've been making things for long enough now that I've learned a lot of techniques. I have a whole library of tried and true solutions, the right way to do stuff. And I mostly go to those really accepted traditional ways of doing things. They work really well. In the beginning, when I first started making things, I didn't know a lot of techniques. I didn't have a lot of knowledge. What I had instead was creativity. And I'd come up with a problem, like how to organize these tools or how to store them, and I wouldn't have a solution that I'd read in a book or seen in a video. I just had to come up with something. What I find really interesting is that so many of those solutions uh, okay, lots of them were dumb. I don't want to give the wrong impression here. I did many things early on that were just a waste of time. But a lot of the things here are great. They worked beautifully, and they might not be the traditional solution, but they function really well, sometimes better. So it's that interesting push and pull between knowledge and creativity. I know enough now that I almost never have to reinvent the wheel. I know how things are supposed to be done. But in those early days where I didn't know the right way, I came up with a lot of interesting stuff. A lot of stuff that really makes me smile. I was a different person when I made this stuff. I was an English teacher, and I thought I was going to be one for the rest of my life. That was the plan. And life went in a really different direction. And this is a daily reminder of what things were like back then when I was just puttering around in my garage just for fun. This is all still fun, but it's also serious now. It's a business. Uh, speaking of the serious part, patreon.com slash Rex Kruger. I only get to make these videos because of my patrons. This is a video that's been requested many, many times, and I didn't think it was interesting enough until I started looking at it, and I realized there was a lot to talk about. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of my tool wall, and maybe there's some stuff you can incorporate in yours. Thanks so much for watching.